Les Mortes d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, Part 1, pages 248 to 251. Background. King Arthur's favorite knight, Sir Launcelot, has fallen in love with the king's wife, Guinevere. The secret love affair is exposed by Sir Mordred, Arthur's son by another woman. And Guinevere is sentenced to burn at the stake. While rescuing the imprisoned Guinevere, Launcelot slays two knights, who unknown to him at the time are the brothers of Sir Gawain, the king's uh, favorite nephew of Arthur's. After a reconciliation, Launcelot returns Guinevere to Arthur to be reinstated as queen. At the urging of Sir Gawain, who still wants revenge on Launcelot, the king banishes Launcelot to France, where the following excerpt begins. The Siege of Benwick When Sir Launcelot had established dominion over France, he garrisoned the towns and settled with his army in the fortified city of Benwick, where his father King Ban had held court. King Arthur, after appointing Sir Mordred ruler in his absence, and instructing Queen Guinevere to obey him, sailed to France with an army of 60,000 men, and on the advice of Sir Gawain, started laying waste all before him. News of the invasion reached Sir Launcelot, and his counselors advised him. Sir Bors spoke first. My lord Sir Launcelot, is it wise to allow King Arthur to lay your lands waste when sooner or later he will oblige you to offer him battle? Sir Lionel spoke next. My lord, I would recommend that we remain within the walls of our city until the invaders are weakened by cold and hunger, and then let us sally forth and destroy them. Next, King Bagdemagus. Sir Launcelot, I understand that it is out of courtesy that you permit the king to ravage your lands, but where will this courtesy end? If you remain within the city, soon everything will be destroyed. Then Sir Gallyhood, Sir, you command knights of royal blood. You cannot expect them to remain meekly within the city walls. I pray you, let us encounter the enemy on the open field, and they will soon repent of their expedition. And to this, the seven knights of West Britain all muttered their assent. Then Sir Launcelot spoke. My lords, I'm reluctant to shed Christian blood in a war against my own liege. And yet I do know that these lands have already suffered depredation in the wars between King Claudus and my father and uncle, King Ban and King Bors. Therefore, I will send, I will next send a message to King Arthur and sue for peace, for peace is always preferable to war. Accordingly, a young noblewoman accompanied by a dwarf was sent to King Arthur. They were received by a gentle knight, Sir Lucas the Butler. My lady, you bring a message from Sir Launcelot? He asked. My lord, I do. It is for the king. Alas, King Arthur would be readily would readily be reconciled to Sir Launcelot, but Sir Gawain forbids it. And it is a shame because Sir Launcelot is certainly the greatest knight living. The young noblewoman was brought before the king, and when he had heard Sir Launcelot's entreaties for peace, he wept and would readily have accepted them had not Sir Gawain spoken up. My liege, if we retreat now, we will become a laughingstock in this land and in our own. Surely our honor demands that we pursue this war to its proper conclusion. Sir Gawain, I will do as you advise, although reluctantly, for Sir Launcelot's terms are generous and he is still dear to me. I beg you make a reply to him on my behalf. Sir Gawain addressed the young noblewoman. 
Tell Sir Launcelot that we will not bandy words with him, and it is too late now to sue for peace. Further, that I, Sir Gawain, shall not cease to strive against him until one of us is killed. The young noblewoman was escorted back to Sir Launcelot, and when she had delivered Sir Gawain's message, they both wept. Then Sir Bors spoke. My lord, we beseech you, do not look so dismayed. You have many trustworthy knights be behind you. Lead us on to the field, and we will put an end to this quarrel. My lords, I do not doubt you, but I pray you, be ruled by me. I will not lead you against our liege until we ourselves are endangered. Only then can we honorably sally forth and defeat him. Sir Launcelot's nobles submitted, but the next day it was seen that King Arthur had laid siege to the city of Benwick. Then Sir Gawain rode before the city walls and shouted a challenge. My lord, Launcelot, Sir Launcelot, have you no knight who will dare to ride forth and break spears with me? It is I, Sir Gawain. Sir Bors accepted the challenge. He rode out of the castle gate. They encountered, and he was wounded and flung from his horse. His comrades helped him back to the castle. And then Sir Lionel offered to joust. He too was overthrown and helped back to the castle. Thereafter, every day for six months, Sir Gawain rode before the city and overthrew whoever accepted his challenge. Meanwhile, as a result of skirmishes, numbers on both sides were beginning to dwindle. Then one day, Sir Gawain challenged Sir Launcelot my lord, Sir Launcelot, traitor to the king and to me, come forth if you dare and meet your mortal foe, instead of lurking like a coward in your castle. Sir Launcelot heard the challenge, and one of his kinsmen spoke to him. My lord, you must accept the challenge, or be shamed forever. Alas, that I should have to fight Sir Gawain, said Sir Launcelot but now I am obliged to. Sir Launcelot gave orders for his most powerful courser to be harnessed, and when he had armed, rode to the tower and addressed King Arthur. My lord King Arthur, it is with a heavy heart that I set forth to do battle with one of your own blood, but now it is incumbent, incumbent upon my honor to do so. For six months I have suffered your majesty to lay my lands waste and to besiege me in my own city. My courtesy is repaid with insults, so deadly and shameful, that now I must by force of arms seek redress. Have done, Sir Launcelot, and let us to battle, shouted Sir Gawain. Sir Launcelot rode from the city at the head of his entire army. King Arthur was astonished at his strength and realized that Sir Launcelot had not been boasting when he claimed to have acted with forbearance. Alas, that I should ever have come to war with him, he said to himself. It was agreed that the two combatants should fight to the death with interference from none. <laughs>